we're going to get started. I'm so thankful that you all took some time to join me today to learn about the physical count process and counterpoint. My name is Ariel and I'm one of the account managers here at RCS. I want to be sure to honor everyone's time and leave plenty of time for question and answer. So we're just going to jump right in. So here's what we're going to cover today. Uh, what is physical count? Why perform a physical count? some practical tips and tricks to make the process smoother, physical count versus cycle counts, how counterpoint comes into play throughout the physical count process, and some mobile scanning options to make things a little bit faster and to reduce some um, room for human error. Again, my name is Ariel. I'm one of the account managers here at Retail Control Systems. I work primarily with lawn and garden, liquor and wine, specialty retail, and museum industries. So for starters, what exactly is physical count? Physical count or physical inventory is a process where you physically count your entire inventory in order to obtain an actual count of the goods owned by your company. The actual counts are then compared to the quantities reported in your detailed inventory records. <clears throat> Counterpoint. If a difference exists, the quantity shown in the system should be changed to the physical count. Some synonyms for physical inventory, laborious, tedious, time consuming. I think you get the point. So why would you want to perform a physical count? Um, seems like such an arduous task. Can't you just rely on the numbers that are in counterpoint? You can. Um, however, records can be skewed over time. There can be losses. There, you know, inventory, as some of you may know, sometimes seems to just get up and wander away. So while physical count can be a burdensome tasks, task, it's one of the most important things you can do to ensure your profitability and success. And here are some reasons why performing a physical inventory count is so important. For one, taxes. An annual physical inventory count is usually required for tax purposes. It can also help you lessen your tax burden by recording your losses. Shrinkage control. Physical inventory counts help you identify shrinkage problems. As I mentioned, inventory might be getting up and walking away. Um, things are missing for any number of reasons, but the most common causes are loss, damage, and theft. Um, also, informed decision making. With accurate, up to date information about your inventory, you'll be able to make informed decisions when working with wholesalers and vendors. And efficiency. Without accurate stock information, effective inventory control is not possible. An accurate inventory database helps your team save time and serve your customers better. Instead of having to check the stock room to see if a product is available, they can trust those numbers in the CounterPoint database and focus on serving the customer. Since physical count can be quite an undertaking, no matter what type of system you're using, we want to provide some wisdom to equip you and your team for success and to reduce the trauma of actually performing the physical count. So you'll want to prepare for the physical count ahead of time. Lots and lots of preparation, but it will be so worth it. So here are some tips for preparation. Choose your counters wisely. Don't assign your inventory counts to just any employee. The group conducting your stock counts should consist of seasoned employees as well as those who can provide fresh eyes. You'll need seasoned team members as these employees would be familiar with your policies and the location of different items. However, someone who's so used to your store or stock room may overlook small issues and details, so having people who are a bit new to the team may be beneficial as well. Make sure the inventory team includes several people, and if not using a mobile scanning option, Make sure they're equipped with pencils and erasers to easily correct mistakes on their count sheets. If you have any reason at all to doubt your staff's ability to successfully pull off a physical inventory, you might want to follow your gut and go with an inventory service instead. Better safe than sorry when it comes to such a tedious process. Make sure you schedule the event ahead of time. The question of when and how often you should conduct a full physical inventory count really depends on you. Many retailers do it just once a year. Others conduct it on a biannual basis, while other stores do it even more often. But let's be honest, there are tons of you out there who have never done a physical count, which is why you're here today. 
It's best to do the count during a time when your SKUs are at their lowest levels because it's less to count. Whatever you decide, though, you'll want to settle on a date well in advance, weeks or maybe even months before, and make sure your employees know what's coming up. At this stage, you need to take down the names of the people who will be on your count team, make sure they can make themselves available on that date. Ideally, you don't want to halt store operations, so if you can manage it, schedule your inventory count after business hours. But if this isn't possible, and you'll need to close up shop for a day or several hours, be sure to give your customers a heads up. Um, next, you'll want to map your store. Draw a map of your store and stockroom that illustrates where your products are located. You should sketch out locations of every rack, display, wall, and shelf if necessary. Doing so might be really time intensive at first, but it's going to give an at-a-glance view of your store and make it easier for you to assign people to each selection so you can determine the best way to go about the counting process. Where to start counting, how to move around the store, all of that can be seen from a bird's eye view instead of trying to navigate as the counting starts. Your map can also serve as a handy checklist when you're actually counting products. You can mark off the sections that have already been counted, making it easier to see how much you've completed and how much you have left to go. Make sure you label boxes and shelves. Don't go into the task blind. If you're doing a physical count of your inventory, be sure to mark the boxes or shelves in your stock room if the products in them are not visible. When the time comes to count inventory, having everything in a marked location is a necessity. Those loose boxes and stray pallets without a home are often the problems that come back to haunt you while you try to reconcile the counts. Even if you have to make new temporary locations for the duration of the count, put everything in a well-marked and defined place and leave it there. While you're at it, make sure everything is where it should be. Walk around the store and the stockroom and keep an eye out for items that aren't in their proper place. Are there tank tops lurking in the footwear section? Did someone mislabel a box of merchandise? Be sure to correct these issues before you begin counting. Also, you'll want to think about items that are in limbo. When you're planning your inventory counts, figure out how you're going to deal with things that are pending. These could include merchandise in transit, such as outstanding orders from suppliers, or products that have been returned. Ideally, these items should be processed and dealt with before performing the count to avoid any confusion later on. And ditto for faulty products. If you encounter damaged items before the count takes place, deal with them early on. You'll also want to orient your staff. That is not one of my bullets, but that's pretty important. We don't want to overlook that step. See to it that your team is familiar with all the steps you took above. If you created a map, Show it to them and ensure they know where people are assigned. Did you change the position of certain items or relabel boxes and sections? Tell them, or better yet, show them. Take a walk with them on the sales floor or stock room so they can familiarize themselves with everything. This will make the task of actually counting and recon reconciling much easier. Um, and of course, you want to feed your team because they're doing such hard work. So prepare food and drinks for your team. Water, sodas, a few boxes of pizza, or the like will go a long way in keeping your employees happy and efficient. Physically counting all of your inventory is a tedious and time-consuming process. So you want your team to stay on top of their game. Keeping them well-fed and watered helps them to do just that. So that's it for preparation tips. Once the counting is done, you can breathe a deep sigh of relief and refocus because now you have more work to do. The individuals conducting the inventory should count each item on their sheet and only record the exact quantities. When the physical inventory count is completed, compare the physical count to the counterpoint inventory record. You'll want to make sure you audit the counts right away. Um, double check and audit your counts as soon as you possibly can so that you're double checking your numbers before you update your stock levels. You want to make sure everything was counted correctly. The time to do that is right after the inventory count is complete, so everything is fresh in your mind. So don't postpone inventory checks and audits. And in case there is a discrepancy, you need to investigate and rectify. You may have to require a recount for any major discrepancy, so it's important to do that right away. Then you'll want to analyze the results. Pinpoint your high risk zones 
Use your inventory reports to identify high risk zones or regions in your stores. See where the inventory really does seem to be getting up and walking away. Tell your staff about these high risk areas and figure out how you can minimize losses in those areas. Also, you can compare multiple completed inventory count reports. Once you've completed multiple counts over a period of time, it's beneficial to examine those reports so you can spot patterns. This will help you figure out why losses or discrepancies are taking place so you can take preventive action for the future. Comparing past reports with current ones will also help you see if your inventory practices are effective. Are discrepancies decreasing over time or not? Whatever the case, the only way to find out is to compare the data. Let's talk briefly about the difference between physical counts and cycle counts. As I mentioned earlier, many retailers rely on both methods to ensure inventory accuracy throughout the year and to make one per year physical count a smoother and less burdensome event. We already know that a physical count is one giant count of all of your goods, typically performed once per year. So here's why you might want to consider doing cycle counts instead or in addition to. Cycle counting is the process of partially counting merchandise on a continuous basis so you can monitor stock levels without interrupting store hours. Cycle counting can be done daily or weekly, usually before the store opens, and can free you from having to do full inventory counts. You can start, you start by selecting a subset of your inventory. It can be a category, a subcategory, vendor, gender, you name it. Count only those items and compare the count data to what is listed in CounterPoint. Rectify the discrepancies and update the inventory records. While the primary purpose of cycle counting is to maintain inventory accuracy, there are a lot of other benefits that can come out of it. For one, it can help you run your store more efficiently. Since your staff is aware that you're doing regular stock takes, they'll be more likely to stay on top of admin work and put items back in their proper places and be more organized overall. Cycle counting can also help reduce theft. If employees know that the owner or manager does regular cycle counts and audits, they might be less likely to steal. And now for CounterPoint. I'm going to jump right into the system and we're going to walk through each step of the physical count process with you. As you can see, I have the new 853 user interface. I absolutely love it. If you love it too, go ahead and throw a comment or a question in the box. I'm anxious to hear your feedback on this. All right, so we already know from time to time we need to perform a physical count of inventory to verify our on-hand quantities. CounterPoint allows you to record the results of a physical count and adjust your inventory automatically. So we're gonna follow these steps. From the main menu, so you can see I've been in here before all these physical count tiles are appear in the recently used, but we'll pretend I haven't already been in there today. From the main menu, I'm gonna go to inventory, physical count, and I'm going to click the physical count create. It looks like these are numbered, one, two, three, in order of how they're used, which I think is pretty handy too. It makes it a little more explanatory when people are guiding themselves through this process for the first time. So we're going to click create. And I'm waiting for my pop-up. Here we go, it was hiding, still hiding. Maybe it's on one of my other monitors. That's exactly where it was. Sorry about that. I have too many monitors up. Okay, so this is the physical count create window. This is where you start the physical count process. So before you create worksheets, before you send people out to count, you want to make sure you start with the create process. So from the item selection tab right here, 
you can specify the criteria you want to use to select the items to be counted. So if you're doing a cycle count and you only want a certain category or subcategory or vendor, that's where you would choose this criteria. If you're doing all, all locations or just one location, you really don't have to put any criteria in here. But again, for those cycle counts, you can really um, reduce what, what shows up on the worksheet. So also, if you only want to include items that you haven't counted recently, you can go to the Inventory Selection tab and then specify a cutoff date for the physical count in the last count date. So I'm just going to create a worksheet for the main location, as you can see, for all items. So you click the Create button, and what that does is it freezes your on-hand quantities and creates physical count transactions for all of the specified items. These transactions provide a snapshot of the current on-hand quantities. As you can see, I did this once before, and I did not remove the physical count transaction, so I had to basically replace all of them. So this is giving me my event number. You can record that because you may need to refer to it later on. Um, the physical count create completed with no errors. Do you want to view the physical count worksheet? So at this point, your inventory is frozen and you should suspend all counterpoint activity that may affect your on-hand quantities for the items you're counting. This includes sales, returns, purchasing and receiving, and transfers. You may resume these tasks after you've completed the remaining steps and posted your physical count. So we're going to click yes to preview the physical count worksheet. And here's our worksheet. As you can see, this is really designed to print out and hand out to people those count teams with pencils and erasers so they can put their count numbers on the lines and their initials in the checked by column. So at this point, you can click the print button, specify how many copies you want to print, and hand those out. If you're, if you're going this route, you should print a copy of the physical count worksheet for each person who's participating in the physical count. For example, if your items are stocked in different areas of the store, you may wish to have a different ind individual count each area and record their results on a separate physical count worksheet. Okay, so we're going to close out of our physical count worksheet and out of our physical count create window. So now you've distributed your lists and your team is going off and counting all of the items. When they're done counting, they're going to come back to you with their sheets and you're going to go to enter the physical count. Here we go. So this you can put into table view by clicking that grid button and that's going to show you everything that has a physical count transaction created for the main location. So all of these items and you can go through and you can enter in your count quantities manually. And this is where there's a lot of room for human error, which is why we recommend some mobile scanning options, but we can go over that in a little while. So at this point you enter the item, you, um, you have it in grid view, so you can enter in easily and quickly this way. If you want to go item by item, you can do that as well. So see we're starting with just the first item number. You can change how you're sorting. Um, here we go not filter, sort, this AZ button up here so you can sort instead of by item number, you can sort by vendor, account code, category, you get the point. 
and then you can um, enter in your count quantities in these boxes for the item that's selected. If you are counting a gridded item, you can click on this little button. It looks like a kind of like a little pencil and a piece of paper. Click on that and it brings up this grid worksheet and you can enter in your counts for the different grid variables. It's important to note that during this process, if you pick an item, so if you're entering in an item number rather than using the, the worksheet here, the grid view, um, so if you enter in an item number that did not have a physical count transaction created, a message is going to appear in CounterPoint to let you know that that item is not frozen. You can click yes on the message to freeze the item and continue. So if the item is not gridded, you would just enter in your count quantity in the count quantity one field. If you recorded multiple count quantities for the item, so if multiple employees counted different areas of your store and those items were in those different areas, you can take up these additional fields. You can leave any remarks you want to in the comment field. And then you're just going to repeat these steps for each item in your count, which I'm sure you're getting the picture that a cycle count would be a lot less tedious than a physical count because a physical count is every single item and a cycle count is just a subset of your items. Okay, so let's pretend that we entered the, the numbers, the counts for all of those items. Then we would click on the physical count edit list. Here's what that looks like. And since I didn't actually enter any counts, there's nothing in this report. If I had entered in numbers for every single item, they would populate here. You can print this report to reconcile any discrepancies. And once those are rectified, you go to the physical count post. And that looks like this. You can tell it to skip any uncounted items, which in this case, it's going to skip every item because I didn't actually count any. Click the post button, see it's processing all of those items. And it says 83 transactions had errors and were not processed. And this is going to tell us those errors were that we didn't actually count anything. You can also view the physical count journal, which typically pops up after this. I'm guessing it's hiding behind another window. And then at the end of the day, if you have physical count transactions that you did not complete, you can remove them. So this is going to show me all of those transactions. They're all uncounted. There they are. We're going to remove them so we have a fresh start next time. And that is a very simple process to do physical count. Oh, I have a question from Stacy. What happens if you hit assume quantities on hand are correct instead of skip? That's a great question, Stacy, and thank you for joining us. So if you, um, if you tell CounterPoint to assume the quantities on hand are correct instead of skipping, then it will be counted. It'll just be counted in the number 
of on hand is going to be the count number? That was a great question. So I want to draw your attention to this physical count import. This is where you would, instead of um, going through and manually entering count numbers, you would have a file from um, one of the mobile scanning options, either importing a file um, or with CP Mobile, it updates directly to the database, I believe. Um, actually, no, they all create a file. I was incorrect. They all create a file, so you would browse, you would pick your file, and you would import it, and then you map the fields. So say your item number is in field one, you put one. If your item quantity is in field three, you put that. We don't want to assume quantity one unless you're scanning one for every everything. Um, and if you want to map additional fields like serial number, unit of measure, count user, all of those things, you can do that as well. Or you can just put a blanket count user and count notes for that. And at that point you would hit import and it would import the count rather than manually entering. And then you would go to physical count edit list, verify everything's accurate, and then you would post. George, this is a great question. Does remove unfreeze the on hand account? So I believe posting the physical count unfreezes the inventory because you're updating the inventory numbers when you post and then that should unfreeze the, the inventory. So Stacy, I'm not sure I understand your second question. If you physically missed missed it, it would show that you have it. So if you physically missed counting an item that was on the physical count record, it had a transaction, if you don't skip it, it would show you have it. Correct. If you, if you clicked assume quantities on hand are correct, you're welcome. But at that point you would probably want to say, hey, we didn't count this item, let's go back and count it. Um, George, should you freeze on hand inventory when doing a cycle count while open? Absolutely, anytime you're counting, you wanna freeze it because um, you need to make sure that your um, inventory isn't walking off. You wanna really maintain a window of control and not count items that people are gonna be purchasing. Or at least make note, if, if you're counting something, it should always be frozen. If you're selling stuff or returning stuff, leave a note for the person counting so they can take that into account when they're reconciling. So they can add those numbers in or take those numbers out. Does that make sense? These are great questions, um, okay. So I had so we've gone through the counterpoint portion of this. The physical count process itself in counterpoint, I believe, is pretty self-explanatory um, and pretty simple to go through. So um, let's go back to the presentation. Um, let's see. So we do have some mobile scanning options, and this will minimize human error because you're not. Um, not going through and manually counting and then going through and manually entering numbers. Let me just find my notes here, pick up where I left off. So um, as I mentioned, a lot of people do those physical counts on paper with pen. That's what we do in-house here. Um, and then the, the team uses physical inventory count sheet to tally up the products and reconcile the data in the system. This method definitely gets the job done. It's pretty inefficient and, re and requires the double entry. Not to mention, since physically counting inventory is already a manual task, the last thing you need to do is manually tally and record data. So let's um, briefly go over three options for mobile inventory scanning, and then we should still have plenty of time for question and answer. Um, so CP Mobile, we did go over this process in depth last month, the CP Mobile physical count process. Um, many of you joined me for that, so I'm glad to see you back here. Um, you can check out that recording anytime on the RCS customer portal. So this option um, is pretty inexpensive and flexible to use. I have found that it's great for small shops, 
but CP Mobile is not for everyone. It's easy to sign up for one month so you can try it out and see if the functionality will meet your needs. Um, there's just a little screenshot here of the physical count worksheet and pricing examples here. Um, some other points about CP Mobile, it's an iOS app, so you get it on the iTunes store. The app itself is free. Um, you pay NCR monthly for the, for the subscription. So you download the app onto your iOS device. It can be an iPod Touch, an iPhone, or an iPad. You can use Bluetooth scanners, your device camera, or a sled, which also has a credit card reader. So if you're doing CP Mobile for sales and inventory management, you can kind of use it for double duty. Um, so you can activate that, activate the subscription when you need it and deactivate it when you don't. So it's probably one of the least expensive, inspe le excuse me, I can't talk today, least expensive mobile inventory options because you can deactivate it when you don't need it. So if you're not doing regular cycle counts, you're only going to do once a year annual inventory. You can turn it on for one month out of the year. And that's, according to this, $39 per device. Um, it also connects directly to your CounterPoint database. There is a file that lives on the device that you create, but it's simple to import. Another solution is to be solutions. Um, we also did a webinar a webinar in June to cover the entire to be suite functionality. Um, that webinar should also be available on the RCS customer portal for you to watch at any time. 2B is a more expensive and robust solution to get into. Packages start at $2,700 per seat for licensing and equipment. It's a very popular option for a lot of my liquor stores and garden centers. Um, so it's important to note there's the upfront licensing and equipment costs as well as ongoing support costs. Um, I did have pictures I was putting in here, but Google did not like me today. It was being very slow, so I did not have time to get pictures in here for you. Um, but you basically use a small mobile smart computer, um, like a Honeywell kind of little mini computer, and load the programs on there. And um, a lot of people like Tubi, and for some people it's just a little too much. So there are different options for different needs. And then the last mobile scanning option is the AML LDX10. Um, these are really neat little scanners with built-in programs. Um, the DC suite is what we have used um, at RCS to customize some programs specifically for you. The programming is very simple, and the scanners are moderately priced. They're our mid-range solution. And those devices are available for rent or for purchase. I think it's important to note, too, um, that for novice or beginner um, beginners out there doing physical count, we do offer physical count assistance. So we can go on site and, and walk you through the process start to finish um, or just be there to you know, be an extra scanning hand. So those are the mobile scanning options. Those are really going to help to reduce errors and speed up the counting process. Um, so there's also some great information and exercises that can be found. I see my typo now. It's very blatant. In the CounterPoint 305 manual, which you can find on the RCS customer portal, um, as well as ncrcounterpointhelp.com. That's an online help guide with step-by-step -step instructions that will take you through physical count from start to finish as it relates to CounterPoint. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, you can go through training or have on-site assistance for physical count. Those are great options that are available to you with our amazing team of trainers. Um, and today's promo code, um, AMLU50, gets you $50 off the purchase price of an AML inventory scanner. So if you buy five scanners, you get $50 off times five. So it's $50 off the purchase price per scanner. Um, from now until December 15th, 2017. And that's all the information that I have for you today. So I would love to open it up for questions. 